Okay, cool. I'll talk to you later. Hey guys, welcome back. Thanks for coming. Today is February 16th, 2024. It's a Friday. It's the Hotline Show. If you don't know, the Hotline Show is when people call the number below, leave a voicemail, ask a question, leave a comment, and then I respond. It's fun. We've got some great calls. Let's just jump right into it. Let's go to the first one. Hey, Noah, just wanted to say your video on the meaning of life made my day. Also, do you have any plans uh, to catch the total solar eclipse up there in New York State? Thanks again. Cool. Thanks for that call. Yes, a friend of mine got a place... Rochester area? Oh, no, no, no. I meant to say Syracuse, not Rochester. Fuck. Okay, sorry about that. Also, I know a lot of you guys are thinking, what happened to the video yesterday? And I know. I actually made something, but then when I was editing it, I didn't like it. So I just killed it. But the intro was kind of good. So I'm going to play that real quick, and then we're just going to go back to the hotline show. All right? Cool. See ya. Hello? Hey, Dad. Yeah, yeah, I heard back. Yeah, I gave them the proposal, said it would be Something like twelve to fifteen thousand, but we do a whole bunch of different stuff, included all the expenses. Then they got back to me and said the best they could do was two hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah, I know, I know. Well, we've got this YouTube channel going, so I think it's uh it's where it's gonna be. Yeah, I mean any day now. Yeah, I know. I mean of all the delusional endeavors I've taken on. This one might be the most diluted. No, 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 I know, I know. Keep it up, I'll keep it up. Yeah, I mean, what else do I have to do? Okay, yeah. All right, we'll talk later. See you, Dad. Let's take another call. Hey, Noah, it's Will. Uh, I'm a photographer, and uh, I used to listen to your all-consuming podcast and I'm I remember you mentioning that you thought traveling was pointless and uh, I think traveling is good for you know getting out of your bubble and seeing other people and seeing different landscapes uh, you know like geographically and stuff but I I'm starting to agree that you know I feel like at least I road trip a lot and driving around America is starting to look the same because of like corporate franchises and stuff everywhere. And every town has a Starbucks and a Target and all that. So uh, I guess I don't really have a question other than uh, could you expand on your thoughts about traveling uh, since, you know, as a photographer and photographers typically like to travel. So uh, yeah, thanks for the, thanks for making these videos. I'm really enjoying them. Cool. Thanks, Will. I appreciate that. I really enjoy your YouTube videos as well. Uh, and thanks for listening to All Consuming. Always love to have the All Consumers here. Yes, I might have said traveling is pointless, and I was probably being funny, trying to be funny, but I mostly agree, still agree with that now, although obviously it depends. In America, in the United States, a lot of shit looks the same now. There's not, what's the difference? It's everything looks like a fucking strip mall everywhere. It's really sad and depressing. So, you know, that is a reason to not go anywhere. Although, obviously, there are places that are off the beaten path that are well worth traveling to. And certainly around the world, there's so many amazing places I have traveled a lot. I'd say, I, I don't know if I'd say I've traveled extensively, but I've definitely been around the world. I've been to a lot of different countries. Um, 
there's definitely places to go and see now still to this day. But, you know, I don't know. I feel like I'm getting maybe older and I just don't enjoy the process of traveling, the flying and the the planes, the trains. It's all, it just makes me so tired. That said, when I get there, I'm very happy to be there. So, you know, I, that's that's maybe the only reason why I'm not like excited to go places anymore. I just find the whole thing, especially these days, to just be like, uh, just exhausting. But yeah, I mean, it's complicated. Obviously, there's a long tradition of photographers and road trips, and we all do it, and we want to get out there and explore. That's so much of what photography is about, is finding new and interesting things and maybe even telling stories about it. That said, just lastly on this point, I think there is something to be said about making work in a place that you're very familiar with. And I've been doing a lot of that over the past four or five years now. But I think once you once you really get to know a place, I think you can expose what's really there. And I, I like being comfortable in a place. There's more often than not when you're traveling, you're just, when you're taking pictures, you're just taking tourist photos. And I mean, that's cool, but is there anything deeper to that? And I think you can find the deeper stuff when you really embed yourself in a location over a long period of time. So, you know, there's no wrong or right way to do the photo thing. I mean, whatever gets you out and gets you excited to be making pictures, you should do. But either either works. You know, if you still like to travel, do it. But maybe dig deeper at home. You know, it's... Maybe better for the environment also. Let's take another call. Hey Noah, um, my name is Elisa. I come from I'm from France and thanks to my father I discovered you your work. Um sorry for my English. <laughs> um uh what you do is really interesting and magnificent. I have two questions. Um, first, um, doesn't your current life, life lifestyle make you feel like you're in another world or you're going back to nature or to basics? And the second, I photograph, I, as a photographer, have you ever had periods la like where you were no longer able to photograph like the symptom of the blank page to writer? If so, how did you manage to get out of it? And uh, that's all. Thank you very much for your time and have a good day. Bye. Thank you, Eliza. I hope I'm saying your name right. I'm famously bad at saying names, so no offense. Uh, and your English is great. So don't worry about that. Definitely better than my French or any language because I only speak English. Regarding your first question, sometimes living here, there's days that are just absolutely spectacular and it feels like I live in another world. It's very cool and it's great. And I'm fortunate to live in such a beautiful place that has weather conditions that... Okay, I'm totally answering that question wrong. I misinterpreted it, but when I put the captions over it it made it more clear and I'm just such an idiot but more specifically I was looking at that b-roll footage and I was doing something weird with my mouth now I'm not sure if I should cut it all out or maybe just embrace my weird idiosyncratic t body twitches that only I probably recognize, but now I'm calling it out in this weird Barbara Streisand effect kind of situation. <sighs> All right, back to it. Your second question regarding writer's block or photo block. Yes, all the time. In fact, I think right now I'm having a bit of that. Uh, and it happens almost every year and usually around this time. And... The only way through it is to work on stuff, just shoot through it. I'll just try stuff. A lot of it doesn't work. 
But with most things, time, just give it time. Sometimes, sometimes you just got to do something else, like start a YouTube channel. And uh, then the photos will start coming back. But yeah, it's a struggle always. Uh, I wish it was always flowing. But that's another thing too, is once you build up that momentum, it, it goes and then you can be on fire for a little bit till it all goes away again. Thank you for the call. I'm going to take another one. Hey, Noah. How are you? Um, I just watched uh, your most recent hotline on uh, February 9th. Uh, uh, you mentioned something that I thought was really interesting. Um, I uh, used to work in the arts, and I met a lot of people that had interests in things like VR and AR, and you mentioned you were interested in the Apple Vision Pro, and you were an owner or formerly an owner of the MetaQuest something or other, whatever it may be called. I wanted to ask uh, what experiences you thought were interesting in that device when you had it and when it was working. I personally really like video games and view them as art, um, art by uh, a group of people, obviously, but I always thought it was interesting. I always thought it was really interesting when people took an interest in maybe something that was viewed as more consumerism. And I was just wondering what you were interacting with in VR, video games, or in that space that caught your interest and caught your uh, general attention. That's my question. Hope you have a good rest of the day. Cool. Thanks for that call. Uh, good question. Yeah, I, um, my, first of all, my brother works in the video game industry. He uh, is, He produces games now. He used to be a coder. So video games have always sort of been in my family and I don't play anymore just because it's just when I get into a game, I get so into it and then it just sucks all my life away. So I wish I had more time or wanted to devote more time to playing video games in VR and the meta quest. There was a game called walkabout mini golf. It's probably the best mini golf I've ever played in my entire life. It's just so fucking cool. And I would play with friends and you just walk around, you talk to each other and you play. It's just awesome. And that experience being in there, I think, you know, it's hard to find a, an experience that really just blows your mind these days. And I think going inside VR gives you that. It's so special. And, you know, going back to my brother making games, he came by here 10 years ago with a VR headset. I'm going to put a photo of me wearing it right here. But that's like the original oculus uh like a developer kit or something but that was terrible it's gotten so much better and it's only going to get better and the only thing with that thing is it's so heavy and you know even still one day i'll try the the vision pro uh but the fact that they want to make it about game or work and not games i think is the wrong idea i don't want to work in that thing like Looking around me, there's so much that I want to see and look at. I don't just want to look at screens. But when I play a video game, to be immersed in that, that's so cool. It's amazing. And if everyone should try to find one and check it out because it's it's really cool. And in fact, seeing all the Vision, Vision Pro stuff kind of makes me want to get the new meta headset because those games are awesome. And actually, I don't have time for that. But maybe I would. I don't know. Uh, are video games art? Of course, video games are art. It's so weird that that's ever even been like a debate. Who is arguing that video games are not art? Of course they are. It's such a ridiculous debate. I I don't get it. And you know, just because it's a team or it's just for for commerce. I mean, look at Hollywood films. There's some are shit, but some are truly high art art in the highest sense. And I mean, video games weirdly don't get the credit that they deserve, but damn, they should. I mean, it's spectacular, like emotional, evocative. Uh, every It has everything, every element, every, every type of art is built into those games and it's interactive. It's just truly maybe one of the greatest art forms. So yeah. That's how I feel about that. That's a great call. Thank you for calling call back. Next call. Hey, no, it's your pal Doug. I was really curious when you're 
making notes, putting things in your calendars and so on, how do you refer to yourself? Do you just put the task such as take out the garbage? Or if it's something emotional, you say something like, I need to X or you need to X. I'm really noticing that for things that are soft or I don't have hard feelings about, I use I language. And when I'm feeling not great about a thing or I feel I need to do it, I use you language, like you have to do this. I'm really curious. I, I don't know if I'm the only person, but I'm curious how, how you approach yourself and if there's differences. Have a good day. Cool. Thanks, Doug. Thanks for that question. I've never thought of that before. When I make a note, it's like take out the garbage or call so-and-so. It's I'm never referring to myself in the first person when I make a note or the third person or whatever point of view that might be. It's always just the note. Make prints. Go take photos. Go to the dump. So that's how I do it. I've never even occurred to me to do it any other way, but I'll probably now think about that forever. Next call. Hey, Noah. It's Brian back from the Desire Path Discord days. Uh, I appreciate you playing my last call. And I really just hope Peter from Germany can keep his streak alive. So let's work on that. But I want to comment on the real photographers keep their negatives because like you, I, I was initially like, that's crazy. But then, but then I thought about it. I'm like, I think they're right. Like you don't want the negatives. I've got all these negatives in, in my closet and I, they're a burden. I don't know what to do with them. Like they're mislabeled. I didn't, I didn't arc categorize them correctly. So I couldn't go find a photo if I really wanted to. I'd have to page through all the negative. And like, I don't want, I just don't, I don't want the negatives. So I just, they're, it's a burden. I don't want them. I, but I can't throw them away. So I just think if you didn't get them right away, you solved the problem. So I, they might be right. But it also had an idea that I think you could get an old digital camera with a, a memory card. You take it to the lab. You tell them, I want four by six prints. And when they give you the prints and they say, do you want memory card back? You say, no, you keep the memory card. And maybe that's the same thing. I don't know. I think this one is, is maybe not what we seem to think about it right away. They might be right. I don't know. Thanks, Brian. Yeah. I mean, I think the burden element is exactly what my video was about. Uh, but yeah, they also might be right. I'm, th no, they're not right, but they're also not real photographers or, you know, they're just following a trend. I think it obviously depends on who's doing it. But, you know, if you uh, if you care about your photos and the photos you're making, you want that negative. And of course, like, the problem with shooting film is the storage and categorizing and labeling and all the things that come with it. And it, you know, there's better ways to do most of it now. So yeah, uh, that is a, f a funny bit about giving the card to the lab. Um, yeah, nice one. Good joke. Thanks for calling. Call back again. We love to hear from you. Next call. Hello, Nova. It's Peter from Germany again. Uh, f first of all, uh, hi, Brian. Thank you for the kind words. I appreciate you. Uh, okay, I have a question. Nova, you used to take a lot of pictures in the big city. You lived in uh, Williamsburg and when it was still cool. And now you live in the woods. I was wondering why did you move to the woods and are you still happy? Thank you. Peter, thanks for calling again. You're the returning champion. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so um, why did I move to the woods? Well, mostly because I just want, wanted to. It's a long story, actually. Um, when I was living in the city, I always wanted to move upstate. I loved upstate New York. And at I was tra going upstate lots of weekends, friends bought property not too far from where I live now. That's actually where the book Cabin Porn started. So, you know, it was just something that I did and uh, I enjoyed doing. And also at that time in my career, I didn't really need to be in New York City that much. I was traveling a lot, so I could just sort of be anywhere. So I don't know, it, it just seemed like 
a good idea at the time. And it, I think ultimately it did turn out to be a good idea. I'm, I'm still happy with the choice that I made doing that. I wouldn't mind having an apartment in the city still in Williamsburg, uh, so I can make it cool again. But yeah, I don't know. I mean, that's that's a long story short. And I think I'll I'll talk maybe hopefully in upcoming videos about cabin porn that project that I did almost. I think it is now ten years ago. Uh, there's a lot of photos and videos from that project which, you know, ultimately led me to where I am today. So, yeah, I mean, that's it. Uh, thank you. Call back. I hope to hear from you again. Let's do one more call. Hi, Noah. It's Caleb again. Uh, first, I just I wanted to thank you for answering my questions last week. Uh, I really liked what you had to say. And this week I have something a bit more morbid to discuss, I suppose. You see... Um, I've been thinking about death a lot recently, like a lot of people do, I suppose. And I was wondering, what is your philosophy on death? Like, how do you deal with it? And more specifically, um, how do you, is, is there any way that you use art to deal with death? And are there any examples in the wider world of art dealing with death that you like or appreciate in some way? Um, anyway, that's all. Uh, thank you and bye. Caleb, thanks for calling back. Appreciate this question. Yeah, death. Well, my philosophy when it comes to death, I think when we die, we cease to exist. And that's really the end of it. Um, I try not to think about it too much. We're all going to end up there one day. It's sad. I mean, it's, it's just really sad. I don't want to die. I don't want to miss out. There's so much stuff happening. I mean good and bad but you know there's there's so much to enjoy in this life that I want to experience and as dark as some days might be uh I I want to witness it and you know I, I hopefully my, the work that I've made some of it at least will live on uh and I think that would be great and that gives me will to continue to live Oh, God, that's so embarrassing. I hope this video doesn't live on past my death. Fuck, I'm not going to cut this out, though. Regarding art, there's... Let me just look it up real quick. I'm probably going to cut right here. There is a project by this woman named Diana Dykeman called Leaving and Waving. So, I don't know when I saw it, maybe a year, year or two ago, but... This photographer, for 27 years, she took a photograph of her parents waving goodbye when she left after visiting them. And it's sort of a sequence of photographs, of sort of, you know, just her parents waving goodbye. And then eventually her father passes away. So then it just becomes her mother. And then at the end, you see her mother getting older and older. And then the last photo is of the, her empty driveway. And I just find this particular photo project very powerful and sad. I look at it and it almost brings me to tears every time I look at it. I'm going to link to it below. Maybe I'll put a photo up here too. But there, a lot of artists deal with this theme of um, love and aging and loss and it's 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 something we do there i'm not going to list off other ones just cuz we could go on forever but yeah i mean it's it's something to think about and i think you know those that emotion of death um or thinking about death and what it means and how sad it is it's powerful and it's uh, it can lead to some great art oof fuck that was cringe all right, I might have just died editing this video. That's it for today. On that note, <laughs> on that note, that's it for today. There were more calls. I'm sorry if I didn't get to you this time. Hopefully we'll do it again next time. I'll try to fit it in. Some calls get a little too long and it's hard to 
get get to. So, you know, if you do call, try to keep it short. I mean, up to a minute is fine, but, you know, I, this is a, a medium that people click away real fast. We're trying to keep it exciting. Thank you for watching. I appreciate it every time. Numbers below if you want to call. Do the stuff. Like, subscribe. I don't I don't know. I don't even know anymore. That's it. That's all. That's all there is to do. We're just liking and we're subscribing. Don't you wish YouTube has a, had a better way of following subscribers? I now subscribe to lots of shows, but it's just that panel on the side. I wish there was a way you could sort it by like tech people or vloggers and just tutorials, right? But now it's just a jumbled mess. Anyway, that's just a little quibble. I'm sure it'll get to the top of YouTube all the people there will listen to me see you next week thank you goodbye